Audiobook Academy Biography Presents Mary Kay Ash Starting from the ground up, Mary Kay Ash constructed a thriving company that opened up new avenues for women to achieve financial independence. Mary Kay Ash, who was she? As the founder of Mary Kay Incorporated in 1963, Mary Kay Ash employed a variety of techniques to help her employees reap the benefits of their success. Mary Kay's business acumen and knack for connecting with others quickly made her company a huge success. Childhood and Professional Development It was on May 12, 1918, that Mary Kathleen Wagner was born and raised in the town of Hot Wells, Texas. For women in business, Ash was a pioneer. She built a large cosmetics company. Ash became a Stanley Home Products salesperson in 1939 organizing parties to entice customers to purchase household goods. As a result of her success, she was employed by World Gifts in 1952, a company that specialized in selling gifts. Ashley left the company after more than 10 years of service and protest after witnessing yet another of the men she had mentored be promoted over her and receive a significantly higher income. A New Business Endeavor Ash, a 45-year-old entrepreneur who had had a string of poor luck in the traditional job, decided to go out on her own. In 1963, she made a $5,000 initial investment. A tanner's relative sold her lotion formulations, which she used to make her own products. She created a modest store in Dallas with the help of her son, Richard Rogers, and hired nine salespeople to work with her. Mary Kay Incorporated. Currently employs more than 1.6 million people worldwide. First year profits and close to $1 million in product sales were generated by Ash's financial skills as well as his business philosophy. The underlying notion was similar to the things she had previously sold. At-home parties and other gatherings were used to promote and sell her cosmetics. Ash, on the other hand, made an effort to set her company apart from the competition by implementing incentive programs and removing the concept of sales territory for her salespeople. Treat others as you would like to be treated, was her credo, and she lived by the maxim, putting God and family first before everything else. To Ash, it was important that everyone in the company be able to reap the rewards of their hard work. Consultants, as Ash referred to them, purchased the products from May Kay at wholesale pricing and then resold them to their consumers at the retail price they had paid for them. Additionally, they were able to earn commissions from new consultants they had brought on board. Achieved Business Success Mary Kay Cosmetics became a very successful business because of her marketing prowess and people skills. In 1968, the company went public, but in 1985, Ash and her family purchased the company back after the stock price fell. On the company's website, the corporation reports annual sales of more than $2.2 billion. Ash's infectious enthusiasm was at the core of this successful business. Even her Cadillacs for top-earning consultants were emblazoned with a pink hue because she was so enamored with that color. The greatest asset of a firm is its people, and she seemed to cherish them highly. There was a lot of discussion over her business strategy. They were applauded for the achievements they brought about thanks to her strategic thinking. In addition to Mary Kay, the success story of America's Most Dynamic Businesswoman, 1981, and Mary Kay on People Management, 1984, she also wrote Mary Kay, You Can Have It All, 1995. 1995. Death and Dying in Later Life. With her departure from the company in 1987, Ash remained an integral part of the company's operations. She started the Mary Kay Charitable Foundation in 1996. Cancer research and attempts to reduce domestic violence are supported by the foundation. Lifetime Television voted her the greatest businesswoman of the 20th century in 2000. On November 22, 2001, in Dallas, Texas, the cosmetics tycoon died. The business she founded had grown into a global corporation by this point with representatives in more than 30 countries. By creating new avenues to financial achievement that were accessible to women, she will be most remembered. Personal Relationships J. Ben Rogers, Ash's first husband, fathered three children with her, Richard, Ben, and Marilyn. After Rogers returned from World War II, the couple split. She married a second time in 1963, but her second marriage ended in divorce when the chemist died suddenly of a heart attack one month later. In 1966, she married her third husband, Mel Ash, and they remained together until Mel's death in 1980. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this. See you in next video.